Cobalt Prince is simply a Prince Nymph um, with some slight color changes here and there. Um, so to get started in the vise, we have a size 12 competition nymph hook, uh, which, is, which is essentially just a barbless hook. Uh, that's accompanied by a 2.8 dark blue magic um, brass bead. And for my thread, I'm gonna be using uh, just a simple black 70 uh, UTC. And we're gonna get started right behind the bead here. Work our way back. And I'm gonna stop right before the bend of the hook. Time to tie in our tail. And for that, we're just gonna be using some, it's a dyed goose by it. I don't even know what the color is to be exact. I don't have the, the naming or the original packaging, um, but it seems to be like a rusty brown or brown gold. Um, and I'm just looking for some pretty thick or hefty strands here for my tail. Variety of ways to tie in tails. I do the, I like the, the crossover look. Um, so I'll tie it on top and cross it over. Um, you can tie it, you know, on the sides as you may be accustomed to. Um, I just simply prefer the look of the crossover on top. So, I mean, it's up to you. So I'm just gonna do three wraps, make sure they look good. And I'm gonna tie on my other one. And I'm gonna cross that over on the other side. So this is essentially what I'm doing. I'm just essentially like making an X on top of the hook as opposed to the side of the hook. Okay, before I lock it in, I'm just going to make any minor adjustments. Hold them in place. And now I can do some tighter, more securing wraps. For the ribbing of this fly, we're going to be going with this uh, gunmetal blue ultra wire. Uh, this is in size small. And I'm going to tie this to the underside of the hook. I'll tuck the, the butt end right in underneath that bead. And then I'll work my way back. I'm just gonna build a little bit of a taper with my thread. For the abdomen or body of the fly, we're gonna be going with some peacock curl. Picked out a pretty healthy, healthy looking strand. And by healthy, I mean just like, you know, it's got some, some thick fibers to it. Nip and off that brittle that tip. And then I'll secure that on the side of the hook. So you can see what they, uh, what I mean by a healthy strand is how nice and you know thick the body becomes. Our 
butt end. And now for the ribbing, so using that gunmetal blue ultra wire, I'm actually going to counter wrap this. Okay. Now we're ready for our legs and I'm just going to work my way back a little bit here and give myself some room for the horns and the collar. So now we're ready for our hackle. For that, I mean, there's, I mean, you could literally use any hackle you want. I like to color match. Uh, so I'll try to find something as close to like the tail as possible. Um, but feel free to use any hackle you want for your legs. I'm going to be using some um, rooster and this is the color furnace. Um, I love, I love the furnace. I just, I kind of use it on everything, but, um, so we're just going to pluck those fibers. We're going to do our figure eight. Secure that stem and nip off and nip off any of that butt end of the stem. And you don't need too many wraps here. You two, maybe three, depending how how much legs you want. I mean I might I might do another one here. Secure that in. Now I do kind of want the legs, the top part I don't want to worry about. The bottom part, you, could, you kind of do want them swooping back. It's not so much like a dry fly hackle where they're sitting straight up and down. So what I'll do at this point once they're secured in is I'll kind of just part and sweep as many as many of the fibers down as possible so down and back and then I'll do one or two wraps just to sweep them backwards now so you know those wraps are helping it bend the fibers that way now if you want to keep the top ones you can um, because the next step for putting on the horns um, I kind of like them laying somewhat flat. Um, I don't like them riding too high. Um, but again, choice is yours. Whatever you like. All right. So now we're ready for our horns. She's just going to fix that there a little bit. And for the horns, we're using some white goose biots and I want to pick out some nice thick ones you don't want to go too thin you really want this is what makes the prints the prints so I'm just finding two two of the nicer ones I have Saw this tip, one of the many tutorials that I watch every day. Um, typically the horns are tied in right on top of the hook, like so. 
if you've ever fished a prince, you know that this will only last you a bite, maybe a fish, before they get pulled out. Um, the tip I saw was simply, instead of tying them in this way, flip them upside down so that the point is facing the front of the fly. And I'd say about two, two beads length in front of the hook eye will suffice. And I really like to get like a pretty hard X shape when I'm done. And you'll see why in a minute. So I'm just gonna secure on this other one. I'm gonna make sure they're sitting right on top. Do one nice tight securing wrap. And that's what I mean by pretty hard X shape. Uh, because the next step now is we're going to cut off the butt ends and then fold them back um, and then tie over that. So now I got sort of two, two tie-in points and to help keep these secure. So I'm just going to cut the butt ends as close as possible. And now as we fold them back, so this point is actually going to go to this side of the fly. This one will come to this side of the fly. I'll fold that one that way. Now you can see how sort of long they're going to be. To me, that's great. Some people like them shorter. Again, the choice really is yours. But now we're going to secure them that way. And now that just makes it a little bit more durable. Um, the last step, or second last step, I should say, is I like to add a little bit of a collar. Now it's not needed. I like to add just a little bit of that hot spot. Um, so at this point, I mean, you are you can put some some head cement. Um, lock it in, do your whip finish, and you're good to go. I like to put some head cement now. And then I'll actually finish with a collar. So now that the head cement's on there, I'll just do a three-turn whip finish. Make sure that's secure. And for the collar, uh, I'm going to go with some ice stub. This is from Hairline. Um, this is the trout ice stub dispenser. And again, choice is yours. I kind of like this golden brown color. Um, kind of goes with the tail and the, and the hackle. So as you pull a bunch, because you really only need the slightest bit, pull Pull what you think is the minimum amount you need and then cut that in half. So if this is the original bunch that I grab. I'm literally just stripping away half of it because that is really how much you need. You'll get, you'll get used to it as you try, but I mean, I think nine out of 10 times, it's still too much in my opinion, sometimes. We'll see how this one goes. So I just want to get a tight, fairly tight noodle. Mm, that's not bad. And then I'll just literally now I'll finish it with a three turn whip finish right in front of that collar. Nip off your end. Check for any stragglers. But you can see now, well, that's your finished 
cobalt prints. Um, but you can see now like how those those legs are swept back. The healthy peacock strand that we picked out is still really, really buggy. The gunmetal ultra wires helping make that fragile peacock a little bit more durable. Tail's a little longer than I like, um, but again, it, it'll fish. And then just that little tiny hot spot of a collar combined with the dark blue bead. This will catch you some fish. Uh, anyways, hope you hope you liked it. Um, hope you found it somewhat helpful, and look forward to uh, the next video. Thanks, guys. Cheers.